I'll be frank with you. Fly cutters have never been my favourite tools, but like many things in the trade, if you take a bit of care, you can coax a fair bit more out of them. This one here is a common sort you'll find for sale. Cost me just over £20 brand new. Nothing fancy, three pieces in all. The body, an R8 shank, and a 3 8 tool bit. For the money, you can't grumble. And yes, it'll work straight out of the box. Now the body comes with a locating slot to hold the tool bit square to the face. That's serviceable, but it's not how I'd leave it. I prefer to fit a small locator block to bring in a 15 degree rake. That way, the rake is built in. No need to keep chasing it on the grinder as the bit wears down. The tool bit itself also benefits from a bit of attention. I grind a shallow five degree clearance along its full length, and that's it. Done once, good for the life of the tool. After that, the only grinding you'll ever do is on the very corner. On this one, I've given the corner a 45 degree approach and dressed it with a small radius. Of course, you can grind different corners depending on the job, the stock and how sturdy your setup is. The rake and clearance I've chosen are a middle ground. Easier on the tool, easier on the spindle. Now setting the block. First I true the body face in a toolmaker's vise, then swing the vise round 15 degrees in the machine vise. One side of the body gets milled away, then I tap two holes to secure the block. A quick check makes sure the bit's point still sits right on centre. The locator block itself is no more than a square section channel with room cut for the bit. It bolts up against the new angled face. Once it's fitted, I turn the lot in the lathe using an R8 collet adapter and bring the block down flush to the body diameter. Next comes the tool bit. I mark out for the five degree clearance, set it over at 20 degrees, and grind the length in one pass. That won't need touching again. The end is then dressed with a 45 degree approach, radial clearance and finally stoned with a small radius. If you want a finer finish you can open up that radius but bear in mind it increases engagement. Like most things it's a balance and a bit of trial and error. Now when it runs, listen closely. A quiet entry tells you the cutter's going in gently, not hammering the spindle or the bearings. I've set the swing just wider than the workpiece. That way, the tool engages tangentially, easing its way in. Set it too wide, and the tool strikes almost square on. Full chip load in an instant. Of course, you can't see the bit when it's spinning, and that's one of the reasons I don't much care for these cutters. This one will be trimmed back flush with the body for safety. The spindle stiffened with a stack of pull spaces, the bottom relieved so it doesn't press against the circle. That little detail makes a difference. As for the cut itself, the finish is respectable. Those rainbow marks are down to the sharp corner radius. 
My own preference? A Scotch bright disc on a DA sander leaves a satin sheen, and with the finer grades you can go right up to a mirror if you like. More consistent too, especially where a flat meets a radius. This fly cutter it serves its purpose, a safe, short throw tool that bridges the gap between my 4-inch and 6-inch face mills. <laughs> 